What is going on, everybody? I am Hoops and Hip Hop, and welcome back to another episode of the Pokeblock Podcast. In last week's episode, we talked about whether or not the Sword and Shield expansion could get delayed, and whether or not that's just like a possibility just because of the factors of everything going on, and Pokemon have been kind of silent on the subject, uh, especially concerning the release date. We don't even have an exact release date at this point, um, but we have some further information today that we're going to be talking about, along with a larger general discussion that actually more or less confirms that it's on the way and it's on track. So that is good to know. Um, so basically what is going on, the main, the main thing we're going to be talking about today, um, is new Pokemon that could possibly appear in the Isle of Armor expansion, because we do know there are going to be like new Galarian forms and new Pokemon with, uh, uh, legendaries like Cub Fu, Urshifu appearing, so we are just going to take a look at what we know about the expansion, both of them, and just try and figure out what brand new Pokemon that we've never seen before could appear, because we do know that there are some that are going to appear. Um, before we get into anything, though, I do need to go ahead and give a shout out to our sponsors. As usual, they are the people that help us keep things going here, so we really appreciate them. And with that being said, today's episode is brought to you by the Tax Defense Group. Did you know that in order to get your stimulus check, you had to have filed your taxes for the 2018 or 2019 tax year? If you haven't filed for 2018 or 2019, there is good news, because the Tax Defense Group can rush e-file your taxes. They know that millions of Americans are struggling and they want to make sure that you get your stimulus check sooner rather than later. So call the Tax Defense Group today at 800-850-7973 to get started. That number again is 800-850-7973, and you can visit them online at thetaxdefensegroup.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Rider Junkie. Due to the global pandemic and economic downturn, Rider Junkie is offering their resume writing service for only $100, and with a three-day turnaround, you cannot beat that price and delivery time. So call Rider Junkie today at 805-587-7966 and you can visit them online at riderjunkie.com. Mention that you heard this ad on UCAS Studios and they will get right to work. Alrighty, so first things first, we are going to talk about that little, uh, little bit of news that more or less confirmed that the Isle of Armor expansion, which is the first one that's supposed to be coming, is pretty much set to go for June, and it's not going to be delayed. While they did not give us any kind of date or outright say this is when it's coming, um, they have recently started some event distributions for Pokemon in Sword and Shield, and Pokemon themselves have described it as to prepare for the Isle of Armor, which basically means it's still on track, it's still coming, that sort of thing. And the distribution itself is actually pretty cool because they are giving away four Galarian form Pokemon with their hidden abilities that also have some items. So first up that the the first up the first distribution, I can't talk. The first one that's going on right now is a Galarian Mr. Mime with its hidden ability. It's also got I believe it's some Pokeballs with it uh, that are attached to it. That can be downloaded right now, so all you have to do is go onto your game, access Mystery Gift, and that's how you'll get it. And then I assume it's going to be every week leading up to the end of June, because that's when the uh, Isle of Armor expansion is coming out. We'll have distributions for Galarian Ponyta, Galarian Meowth, and Galarian Corsola, all with their hidden abilities and with items that come along with them. So that's a nice little way to kind of get excited for the expansion, as well as just kind of do something cool for players. And it's completely free as well, so you can just go download it and just have at it if you don't have any of those Pokemon, especially with their hidden abilities. I did not look to see what their hidden abilities are, but usually hidden abilities are pretty advantageous, especially if you're like a competitive player. So definitely want to look into that. Uh, it's really interesting, though, that even with something like this, where they're basically confirming that not only is it still coming out when they said, but like we're in sort of the final countdown, quote unquote, and they still have not given us an actual release date. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, that kind, I, I want to say that that tells me that they're still working on it. They're still kind of working out the kinks, so to speak, uh, which is fine. Like that's not a big deal, but it's interesting that we just haven't got like a concrete date and we don't, we, we haven't really got anything about it other than we know it exists. Obviously in January when it was first announced, we got 
the fact that there's cub food, there's urshifu, there's the Isle of Armor itself, like new area, blah, blah, blah. And then we got like a little teensy tiny bit of info uh, a couple months ago when we learned, I mean, it basically, that, that mini direct just gave us a little bit more gameplay and that was about it. So we still really haven't heard much of anything past the initial announcement, which is not really much of anything at all. So it's kind of interesting that we're going to be going into this pretty much blind. I will say, like, it's hard to know how much they have to show off, given that this is an expansion, so it's not necessarily the size of a full game, and this is just the first part of it, so it's like, it's going to be, like, just this one alone is going to be significantly smaller than an actual game, but you wonder, like, how, like, big or small is it going to be? Um, I imagine that, like, we're all hoping that it obviously is pretty sizable, but it's hard to say. But I definitely feel like they're def they're still employing the uh, they're still employing the strategy of marketing and revealing stuff as they did in Sword and Shield, where they were very tight lipped. So there's definitely going to be some stuff to be had that we haven't seen to this point in the expansion, um, which is exciting and that kind of like is good that we're going in so blind. I I would just think that we would have had at least one more trailer to kind of show us one more set of new info before we dive right in which could still happen we'll just have to wait and see on that um but as far as the main topic of discussion for today we are going to be talking about like i said a new pokemon that could appear in the expansion what brand new pokemon that we have never seen before could appear in these downloadable expansions because we know there's going to be new pokemon coming in the form of at the very least legendaries and Galarian forms as well, which is obviously very, very exciting. Anytime new Pokemon come around, it's just, it makes things 10 times more exciting than they would be if there weren't any uh, new Pokemon. So uh, that's why we're going to be talking about it today, speculating what new Pokemon we could see that haven't been announced because once again, they're being tight-lipped about it. So that is going to be the discussion today. And the first Pokemon that I want to point to that I can practically say, I can say with as close to 100% certainty that I could possibly say without actually being 100% that we are going to get Galarian Dustocks and Galarian Beautifly. I am beyond positive of that, and here's why. So, first off, <clears throat> the gal two, of the Galarian, two of the Galarian forms that we know that we are getting for sure are Galarian Slowpoke and Galarian Slow King, because those were hinted at in the initial reveal trailer, along with the reveal of Galarian Slowpoke. So we know for sure that those exist, we just don't know what they look like yet. Well, the reason why I bring up uh, Galarian Dustox is that uh, Clara, who is a Poison-type gym leader hopeful that's going to act as one of your rivals in the expansion, if you're playing Pokemon Sword, that is. Uh, she has a hair bow that looks extremely reminiscent of the shape of Dustox. So right off the bat, her having some Dustox imagery in her design, uh, and the fact that she's Poison-type, she's a Poison-type gym leader, which is what Dustox is, that kind of obviously would naturally hint that maybe she'll have a Dustox. And the fact that the hair bow is in the shape of Dustox, but it's like a different color or anything, and everything, that gives you the idea that uh, maybe it could be a Galarian Dustox as opposed to a regular one. Um, the thing that really, really makes that like certain to me, though, is the fact that if we take a look again at Galarian Slowking and Slowbro, uh, both of those guys are Psychic type, or we can assume they're going to be part Psychic type because Slowpoke is Psychic type. Um, and it just so happens that the other rival gym leader hopeful character that's going to be in the Isle of Armor is Avery, and he is a Psychic type trainer. So I very much feel that Galarian Slowpoke, Slowking or Slowbro, those are going to be his Pokemon, quote-unquote, and those probably will be the signature Pokemon that he has. So if he has got a signature Pokemon, likely, that is a Psychic type in a new Galarian form, it only stands to reason that the other gym leader, Clara, will also get a new Galarian form of her own to be her signature Pokemon. And since she's got that Dustox imagery, 
dust stalks just seems like a no-brainer. And when I mentioned earlier that she's a poison type, so dust stalks will probably be a poison type, you might have been thinking, well, dust stalks is already a poison type, so why would it be that way if it was a galarian form? Well, that very much lines up with what's going on with Slowpoke and Slowbro and Slowking, because those guys are already psychic type to begin with. All the only thing that Slowpoke did was drop the water type for its Galarian form. So something similar where it retains that poison type could very much happen for Dustox as well. So just everything is pointing to Dustox happening, which is a no-brainer, and the that's why I believe it's a no-brainer anyway. And the reason why I say Beautifly is because Beautifly is the split evolution uh, to Dustox, where the op on the opposite side of the coin, depending on whether you get Silcoon or Cascoon, uh, you evolve your Pokemon into Beautifly instead of Dustox. It's the other option. Um, so that makes Dustox part of a split evolution, which is exactly the case with Slowbro and Slowking. They are also split evolution versions of each other. So the fact that that glaring form in that situation is split evolution and likely tied to one of the rivals, that most likely means that Clara is going to get the same treatment, ergo, Beautifly will also get the glaring form treatment as well. And I think like that it just pretty much speaks for itself how convincing and uh, just over the top with the amount of evidence that this idea has. So I, I just have no doubt in my mind that this is going to happen. I would be extremely surprised if the, if it didn't happen. Like I, I can't remember something that hadn't been confirmed that I was more sure about uh, in a long time. Like it's been a very long time since I was this sure about something that's technically just a theory. So very excited to see what happens there. Um, because I like I'm I'm just really excited to see new Pokemon again, first off. But like I said, I'm just I'm really, really confident that this one is going to happen. So it'll be interesting to see when and if it actually does. Uh as far as the other group of Pokemon, I guess you could say that we have confirmed to like exist is obviously legendaries because we got cub foo we got urshifu we've got calyrex who was confirmed for the crown tundra we also have new reggies and galarian forms of the legendary birds that were confirmed for the crown tundra um which is very very exciting and then you've got uh zarud who is hasn't been distributed yet uh and is probably going to be distributed as part of the Isle of Armor expansion, but it's also separate to it as well. So it's kind of sort of its own thing. Um, and so with the legendaries being kind of the second group of main Pokemon that we know are going to be in this expansion, it kind of leads you to that point. And the, the, the uh, legendaries in particular that are most noteworthy are obviously the Regis and the Birds, because they're new forms of older legendary Pokemon, with the Regis being new Pokemon altogether that are a part of a pre-existing family, and then you have the Galarian legendary Birds that are Galarian forms for legendary Pokemon, which is crazy. So your first thought comes to maybe there could be other Galarian Pokemon or Galarian forms for other legendary Pokemon, maybe. I think, personally, that that one is kind of, uh, like, it's obviously a big thing to ask at any point for Galarian legendary Pokemon, because we didn't even know it would be a thing before these guys came out, um, but it's kind of even a bigger thing to ask for more when you already have three that are confirmed, because, like, you can't really, you can't really, like, ask for, like, more of this when we didn't even think it was possible to begin with right away. So, like, it gives you the idea that, yeah, it could happen, but at the same time, you you kind of have to expect, yeah, this is probably a thing that's not going to, like, happen super often. It's going to be rare, and, like, so you kind of just have to live with what they give you because it's a special thing. But nevertheless, it is always possible that we could get one, maybe two more, something like that. So looking at the possibilities there, um, I think this is the kind of thing that we could look at. Um, I do, once again, really quick before I get into that, want to thank the sponsors, Tax Defense Group, Writer Junkie, 
call Tax Defense Group 800-850-7973. Have them help you out with your taxes if you need that. TaxDefenseGroup.com can also help you out as well. Rider Junkie, give them a call 805-587-7966. They will help you out with that resume if you need resume help. And you can visit them online at RiderJunkie.com. They will get you set up and good to go. Um, but with the legendaries and Galarian forms, the one that most people have gravitated towards as far as like any additional ones that could be possible is Galarian Lugia, just because you obviously have the birds, and if you have the birds, uh, Lugia just makes the most sense as like their trio master, and Lugia has also been shown to be, uh, there, there have been shown to be multiple Lugia that exist um, through like the... The side games, for instance, with Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, where there's Shadow Lugia. In the anime, there was a baby Lugia that was present. So this Pokemon, like some some legendaries, there's only one that exists of them, but other legendaries have been shown to have multiples of them exist. And since Lugia is one of them, that would kind of give him reason to be able to have a Galarian form, even though he's like a bigger box art legendary as opposed to a smaller like trio legendary. Um, that would that would obviously be amazing. I if I had to guess, it's probably not going to happen, but it's a possibility. It's you never can count it out. So we will have to keep our eyes on that. Um, and speaking of the Galarian legendary birds, before we move on to something else, um, their typings are pretty interesting in terms of like what they could be because they haven't been announced um and everyone kind of has an idea of what they could be but uh we won't know until the games come out so it's kind of a toss-up at this point it's a guessing game and i would just like to throw my hat in the ring as to what i think is going on with these pokemon uh for zapdos i am once again, nearly 100% certain, I'm very confident in the fact that it's going to be electric fighting type, and the very first electric fighting type ever, if it does indeed end up that way. Uh, the reason why I say this is because A, it's lost its wings, or at least it's very much flightless now, so it's not going to be flying type. Um, it still looks, though, as if it could be electric type, because its body shape and colors and stuff that much haven't changed that drastically. Uh, but what they have changed into is very reminiscent of like a fighting type color palette. Because it went from a more yellowy color to a more kind of orangey color. And orange is a color that's very much associated with the fighting type. I think the emblem for fighting type is even orange as well. So I think all things considered... Um, uh, that is the most likely type by far for Zapdos. When it comes to Moltres, Moltres is pretty straightforward in terms of what it looks like. It very much looks like a dark fire type instead of fire flying. Um, that one, like, it, it is the most obvious choice, but for me, it's like, I can't really go against that. I, I really can't say, oh yeah, like, I, I don't think this is the case or whatever, uh, because it's just, like, it just is there. Like, it's right in front of you, this flaming bird of darkness that, it, it just is, like, it looks like it's burning dark fire. Like, it's, it's really, really, you'd have to really stretch it to argue for anything other than dark fire with Moltres, and so, sometimes the most obvious answer is the answer. So, for Moltres, I would go with Dark Fire. Articuno, meanwhile, is definitely the trickiest because there are a couple different types it could be. Um, if the other two types of the other two legendary Pokemon are anything to go off of, though, I would definitely say that it's going to retain its Ice type because uh, the other two birds have retained their typings in the typings that we have, or they've retained their primary typings, I should say, in the typings that we have given them, uh, which I feel very confident in. And as far as the secondary type, which is historically based on those other predictions, the type that has changed, I see two possibilities. I see Psychic as a possibility, and I see uh, Ghost as a possibility. If I had to guess between one of the two, I don't feel as confident in it as I feel with the other two picks, but I would say Psychic, because there was a moment in the trailer where Galarian Articuno was like beaming this stuff out of its eyes, like it looked like it was just a beam of energy that was coming out of its eyes, and that's very kind of reminiscent of psychic-like powers. And if uh, you 
have them with, like, if Galarian Articuno were to have the Psychic type along with those other two types for Zapdos and Moltres, it would actually create a pretty good type triangle because Psychic is strong against Fighting, Fighting is strong against Dark, and Dark is strong against Psychic. So that would create a really nice type triangle that would bond those, uh, Pokemon together even more than they already are and would just really enforce the idea that they're a trio. So for that reason, I actually would feel pretty confident in Psychic Type 4 Articuno, um, but ultimately we're just going to have to wait and see. I am very, very excited to get into the Crown Tundra because it definitely seems like it's the more meaty of the two expansions, which makes sense because it's like the back half. It's sort of the big finale, so to speak. Um... So, like, basically, we're going to be playing the Isle of Armor. It's going to give us a taste. It's going to really get get us wanting more. And then the uh, the Crown Tundra is going to be the one that kind of ramps it up and really kind of just blows us out of the water. Uh, not to say that the Isle of Armor doesn't have a lot to offer, though, because I am really excited uh, about the gym trainer prospect uh, that the Isle of Armor has going on. Um, if you hadn't heard before Sword and Shield released, there were rumblings that there were going to be 18 gyms in the game, and then it was quickly retracted, and apparently it was a translation error on Game Game Informer's part who released the information based on an interview. Um, and ultimately, the idea in Sword and Shield is that there are there is a major league and a minor league for the gyms, and there is a gym of every type, just kind of like in the lore of the world itself, and every year they compete to be a part of the major league, which are the ones you face. And so the ones you face in the game are the major league, and there is a minor league for the rest of the types that is confirmed in game, it's just not, it's just not something you get to see. And so when the Isle of Armor came around and we got introduced to Clara and Avery, they are two minor league gym leaders of the poison and psychic type. So I love the fact that they're expanding on that idea a little more, and I personally would really like to see them do that further. Like, I would really... I would really like to see us be able to see even more of those characters that are the minor league gym leaders because, I mean, frankly, there's 10 gym leaders in Sword and Shield between the version exclusive ones, and now that we've got these two as well, that makes 12, so you've only got six that you haven't covered. That's really not that hard to just, like, throw them in the game really quickly, even if they're not, like, a huge part of the story or anything, or maybe you don't even battle them, just to establish them as a character, just to kind of round out that really cool piece of, like, the Galar region's lore, I think would be really, really cool, and it would just, it would just make the gameplay that much more deep and just make the world that much more, I guess, immersive because that idea that there's a major league and a minor league is really cool. And I think if they flesh that out completely, like they're sort of beginning to would be a lot of fun. So here's hoping they do that. Um, as far as what other Pokemon we could see, uh, I guess in both expansions. Um, the next one I wanted to go to was the Regis because the Regis along with the Galarian legendary birds are very interesting in and of themselves. Um, I don't think we're going to see another new Regi just because we saw very clearly that there were there was a temple for them that was split right down the middle so there was only room for two there so I don't think we're going to get uh, a third Regi but as far as another legendary Pokemon... I could very well see us getting another legendary in one way, shape, or form. We could get another mythical uh, after Zerud. I think that's possible. Um, there could be other legendaries that we just haven't seen yet in the expansion that are yet to be had. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and it'll also be interesting to see if there's like... Because the way I see it right now in the... Crown Tundra, for instance, Calyrex is the main legendary for that expansion. But then, as we've said, you've also got the Regis and the Birds, and those kind of seem to be the sub-legendaries uh, that obviously most games have for that expansion. So, on the flip side, since we have the Isle of Armor coming out, and the main legendary there is Cubfu and Urshifu, could we see any type of sub-legendary for the Isle of Armor expansion like it seems we're getting for 
uh, the Crown Tundra? Well, I think anything is possible, and usually because they like to keep things more or less even, maybe one of the new Galarian forms, because we know, we know at the very least we're going to get more Galarian forms past what we have seen for the reveal. Like, we've seen Slowpoke, Slowbro, and Slowking, but we know there's going to be more new ones than just that. And maybe one of the new ones that we could see are another set of Galarian legendary Pokemon for uh, the Isle of Armor, since the Isle, since the Crown Tundra has the Galarian legendary birds. I actually think that's very possible, and given the whole Asian feel it has to it with the, uh, you've got the dojo there, the, uh, I want to say, I'm pretty sure it has a name, I, I don't know if it has a name, either, either way, you've got a dojo on the Isle of Armor, very Asian, it's a fi fighting dojo, whatever, you know, like very, it's very based, very much based in Asian culture. Cub Fu is based on Kung Fu, obviously. It's got Chinese inspirations. So there's a lot of, so there's a very much Asian vibe to the Isle of Armor. And for that reason, I kind of want to like take a shot and say maybe the legendary beasts from Johto could appear as Galarian forms because <clears throat> we, uh, they're based out of Johto, obviously, which is based in Japan. Uh, they come out of Ecruteak City, which is very much Asian-inspired. So for them to be in an area that is very much Asian-inspired as well, in the Gala region with the Isle of Armor, would make a lot of sense. And then, obviously, they could even counteract uh, the Legendary Birds very well as well, because you've got the Generation 2 Legendary Trio and the Generation 1 Legendary Trio, and Kanto and Johto are very much tied at the hip a lot of the time. So that would be a lot of fun. That would that would Those guys would probably be just absolutely incredible like can you imagine a regional variant Entei, Suicune, and Raikou that that just like the idea of that even is is incredible like it's almost something that you can't really imagine because it could just be like the possibilities are endless for how amazing those could be so I'm personally hoping for them I'm not going to hold my breath because once again there's there's a it's a lot to ask for in terms of a Galarian form of a legendary Pokemon, especially past the ones we already know. But all things considered, I do very much think another Galarian form legendary could be possible for the Isle of Armor, since we do have uh, them for the Crown Tundra. I think they've got to balance it out somehow. Like, relatively speaking, both parts of the expansion have to be roughly the same size, uh, considering it's it's $30 for both, so you're essentially paying $15 for each. So in terms of content, it's gotta they've gotta have uh roughly the same amount of content. So for that reason, I could see there being another set of Galarian legendaries. Which begs but which also begs the question: um, if that were to occur, and you've also got the Galarian forms of regular Pokemon for the trainers. Uh, in once again, Slowbro, Slowking, likely Dustox, Beautifly for the trainers in the Isle of Armor. That also makes it very likely that we could see similar treatment for other Pokemon in the Crown Tundra. We do know of a new character in the Crown Tundra that seems like he's going to be your guide somewhat. He's a rock climber type of character. It's really hard to say if he's going to be, uh, like a like a gym hopeful or anything like that. I don't think he's going to be. He seems to be an independent character, but nevertheless, he probably has Pokemon since he was introduced as like the primary human character of that expansion. And since Clara and Avery likely are going to have their new Galarian forms, it's very possible he could have a new Galarian form of his own as well. And if I had to take a shot in the dark, probably maybe would be ice type or rock type somehow. That's the vibe he gives off. But it also could be anything as well. Uh, so we're just going to have to wait and see. But very exciting stuff nevertheless. But with that being said, I think that pretty much wraps things up. That pretty much 
Uh, we're pretty much out of time. So I want to thank you guys all so much again for listening. I really appreciate it. This really supports not only UCast Studios, which we appreciate here, but it also supports me over on my own, my own channel, Hoops and Hip Hop as well. Helps me th- keep things going there. So I really appreciate that. Um, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to follow wherever you're listening. If you're on YouTube, make sure to leave a comment as well. You can subscribe there. We do this every Friday. It's a lot of fun. And if you're not already following my own channel, Hoops and Hip Hop, I highly recommend that as well because I put out new Pokemon content all the time every week there as well. So with that being said, I will be back next Friday with another episode. I hope you guys have a great weekend and a great week. Until then, have a happy Memorial Day. That's coming up if you're in the U.S. And until the next one, as always, I love you guys very much, and I will smell you guys later.